This has to be the horniest anime I have ever seen. I don't even remember why I tried to watch this show, but it's so much worse than I remember. Look, I don't think it's any secret that isekais can be bad. Really bad. In fact, they make up 90% of all the entries on my most hated anime list. At this point, I'm pretty sure isekai is the Japanese word for where anime goes to die. But there are a few that are just so much worse than the rest. So without further ado, allow me to introduce you to one of the permanent residents at the top of my bad anime list. How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. This show is how I discovered Echi, a genre of risque animation that dances as close to being hentai as it can, without actually being the spicy material. Basically, it's spicy material, but without showing any of the sex, and anime without showing anything good about anime. Isekai was bad enough. There are so many dog water anime in this genre, it's become the running joke that it's just trash. Throw in Echi, which is just there to be provocative and not actually give you a good story. And you have a recipe for the worst show ever made. I wish I could forget watching this. Unfortunately for me, there are things that I can't delete from my mind. I can't say for sure that this is as degenerate as something like Redo of Healer, Boku no Pico, or My Life as Inakai-san's dog, but it definitely feels like it wants to push the boundaries. I mean, there's nothing that says good show like the idea of sexual harassment towards minors. But let's get to the synopsis before I start talking about the lines this show shouldn't have crossed. How Not to Summon a Demon Lord is Overlord's hornier, talentless cousin. The main character is summoned to the world of his favorite video game as his overpowered player character. Instead of Bone Daddy Eines, we get Boner Boy Diablo. Wow, Diablo, real creative name for a demon, huh? Okay, so it turns out two girls were trying to summon a monster to use as an attack dog, and they got this horny loner instead. But when they try to subjugate him, it backfires, because of course he has an anti-magic item on, and they end up his slaves instead. And thus begins his harem, consisting of a big titty elf babe named Sheila, and an underage cat girl named Rem, who's got a powerful demon sealed inside her. The plot of this story, if you can even call it that, pretty much revolves around that demon, and the fact that there's a nerdy looking girl knight who wants to unleash it upon the world. So what does this show do well? So what does this show do wrong? For starters, it's etchy and isekai. Naturally, it's gonna be shit. If I had known that before starting this, I probably wouldn't have traumatized myself with how bad it is. This is a show that dares to ask the bold question of what would happen if we replaced the plot and character development of a story with erotic scenes that range from sleazy and immature to the kind of stuff that would put you on an FBI list. Now, you might think I'm talking about hentai, but this isn't hentai. Echi and hentai are apparently different things. This was an actual show you could find on Crunchyroll and Funimation. No incognito tab needed. It sits right up against the line that separates spicy material from other things, but doesn't actually cross it. But I get the feeling that it really wants to go all the way. It's as horny as you can get without an incognito tab. So this show lacks plot, and it lacks character development. It would be more accurate to describe the story of this show as people do things and stuff happens, rather than as a logical chain of events. Plot elements almost all expire too quickly for them to build into something entirely meaningful, and characters are so empty and worthless that it's hard to get invested in what they're going through. It's very bland and uninspiring, and has all the nuance and creativity of a toddler scribbling on the walls with a crayon. I've stepped in puddles that are deeper than this show, and with things being that shallow, there's only one thing to keep your eyes on the screen. Tits. It's tits. The show leans heavy on the boobies, and with the overwhelmingly female cast being nothing more than walking pairs of tits, each one feels like nothing more than a wet piece of cardboard that orbits Diablo, for no other reason than that's what you're supposed to do in a low-quality isekai series. But even the most mediocre isekais I've watched have had more logical and thought out plots than this. I can't stress enough that this is just tits the anime. But that's just etchy in general, so this is turning into old man shouts at Sky. Even in moments where the show tries to do something reminiscent of a character arc or a storyline, it's still largely geared towards trying to flash tits in your face. There's an entire arc where the elf, who's only around to provide gratuitous fan service with her monstrous melons, is brainwashed by her brother and forced to leave Diablo's harem against her will. Why she would want to stay with that guy is beyond me, but it happens. So Diablo catches on to it and decides he's going to war for his side piece. Well, it turns out the brother was planning on forcing his sister to have his kids. Because that's totally logical. I guess Japan is so desperate to solve their declining birth rate crisis that they're willing to compete with the American South for the title of most linear family tree. 
Look, Japan, you're better off going with the breeding visas. They've got plenty of horny weebs here in the States teetering on the edge of being wizards that would love to help. Back on track, the elf undergoes no changes in this section in spite of it being largely about her, and it plays no importance in the plot of the rest of the series. It was just there as an excuse to tease you with some tits and throw in a bit of incest for flair. So with women reduced to nothing more than sex toys that orbit the main character, and the plot being short bursts of related episodes that fail to establish any lasting story threads to chain everything together, this show lands squarely in the top of my shit list. This is just the author's personal wet dream about finally being popular with the ladies, thinly masked with the isekai veneer. There's no depth outside of the elf's massive rack, and there's no intrigue other than the possibility that there might be someone out there with bouncier boobies. It's a hollow and worthless piece of smut fiction that serves no purpose other than to tease you with sexualized content. This kind of fiction is only better than overly politicized fiction, and only for the fact that it occasionally turns out a half-decent joke. But the abysmal writing and casual incest that means nothing to the story is hardly the worst part of this show. It's the fact that this show clearly wants to make light of actual sex crimes that sinks it right down to the bottom of the sludge pond that is the worst anime of all time. Yeah, Diablo gets away with assaulting a woman and even doing questionable things to a minor. Questionable is probably generous. If you did any of the shit that Diablo did to Rem, you'd most likely end up in prison. But before I delve into this, I want to make one thing clear. I'm not a prude about sexual content in fiction, or even hard topics that are actual crimes. But I have my rules about it. Tasteless and gratuitous sex scenes that serve no purpose in the plot other than to cater to certain desires are bad writing. That's a fact. I've watched shows like Konosuba, Jabba's Reincarnation, and Berserk all of which have varying degrees of sexual content. Konosuba employs it for humor. The main character is the ultimate teenage male scumbag who takes every opportunity he gets to try and get some action. But he constantly gets punished for his antics by the women around him because of this. And on top of that, it's not like he ever does anything creepy, just scummy and perverted. It's also not the centerpiece of the show, even if it does play into it a lot. Konosuba isn't made for you to get off to like an ecchi series is. A jobless Reincarnation uses it in a couple of ways as well. The main character is also a bit of a skirt chasing scumbag, but it's part of his existing personality from his first life, and thus makes sense to be there. And his dirty deeds regularly get him beaten to a pulp. And even when he does finally get it on, it's a more romantic and plot critical moment that was built up over something like 16 episodes of the first season. It's a make and break moment for the two characters involved, and helps to catalyze the next series of events in the story that's coming in season two. And Berserk takes on some very twisted elements of human nature. Guts lives through some horror story kind of stuff in that regard, especially when he's abused as a young boy. But it's there to show you just how bad the world actually is, and how traumatized and broken Guts actually is. The Eclipse was a depiction of the depravity of the God Hand. Berserk is very explicit, but it's a manga that faces off against the dark horrors of humanity's collective evils and the brokenness in the world. When these hard topics are presented, it's always meant to make you feel uncomfortable or to make you hate the antagonists. I say all of that to establish a precedent. How you present these topics is very important to how they're perceived. If you offer up a scene with some questionable actions and present it as something that's supposed to be enjoyed, that's just creepy. There's no other way about it. Episode 1 of this show has a scene where Diablo pins the underage cat girl down on the bed. He then starts playing with her cat ears, which in and of itself is a little weird, but she responds to it with what I can only interpret as sexual pleasure. It doesn't end up going any further at this point, but it became clear that things were gonna be creepy. And this is where I realized that this was going to be an absolutely awful series, and just resigned to see how bad it could actually get. So I made it through the incestuous elf arc and some very uninteresting harem bullshit. There was part of me that was curious as to how bad this was actually going to be, because it was clear that the author only cared about tits. And I eventually arrived at the big event of the first season. Basically, Nerd Girl Night Lady, the second walking pair of tits but with glasses, has managed to do some 3D chess and get Diablo to try and fight the evil demon sealed inside the cat girl. She intends to betray him, but not before he finger bangs the demon out of the cat girl. Now give them hell! Yeah, I gave up at this point. I didn't even know about the ages at that time. I looked that up after just to confirm my suspicion. It's not even like it's treated as a bad thing. It's just there to tease you with sexual content. And a very creepy and questionable kind of content at that. 
But I guess that's just an etchy isekai series for you. Turns out mixing two bad things together doesn't make a good thing. For some reason, nobody ever questions whether it's good or bad that these things are happening in the story. There's no other way about it. This is uninspired trash. It's just that simple. It uses all the generic isekai tropes and leans into the etchy stuff to supplement for the fact that the writer can only create something about as well structured as their erotic fantasies. I guess I shouldn't have expected much, considering how this show is categorized, but I see no reason for this to exist. It's not good story, it's not good comedy, and you can easily find better and less questionable material for your late night sessions. Ugh, I should just end my own suffering. This series is a 2 of 10. For what it's worth, the writing isn't entirely nonsensical. At least it stays in character as a fantasy series, unlike some other bottom-feeding shows I've watched. But that alone is not at all a reason to praise this show. It's just degeneracy for the sake of being degenerate. If my rough drafts from when I was 13 are better than something, you know it's bad. No care. No class. No charm. No story, no comedy, no intrigue, no fun. This show is devoid of everything that makes anime worth watching. When it comes to this show, all the good things you can find about anime are substituted for all the worst things you can find about anime. If your goal was to create something that collected all the worst elements of anime into one spot just to display them, then congratulations, you've done it. If you're watching this show, it's time for you to just bite the bullet and open up an incognito tab, because it's the only reason I can come up with for someone to watch this. Whew, finally done with this video. I've been battling this one because I like to do things well, but none of my attempts were turning out the way I wanted them to. There were script issues, recording issues, and even a time where my meme dealer escaped from the basement and ruined an entire hour worth of recording. He's back in his cage now, and with an ample supply of Red Bull and Adderall to keep him going for a couple of weeks. No memes were harmed in the making of this joke. But for real, I hope you enjoyed this one. I like to do things well, and especially when it comes to my own projects. This is one that was challenging to me, because I could cover it dryly, and hit the points I wanted, and it would end up being really boring or I could make jokes about it that made light of all of my criticisms of the show. There was also the problem of trying to sort out my own thoughts on it, and I was trying not to sound like I was stumbling over myself or didn't know what I was talking about. But it's whatever. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. I'm gonna go bleach my brain and hope that helps me forget I ever saw this show.